Hey there, welcome back. This is Sarah from saradesign.com and I wanted to share an article that I found because sometimes curated content is just what you need because there are so many links to so many websites out there with advice and they all are saying the same thing. So when you see something or when I see something unusual and interesting and helpful, I'm going to share that with you. Um, so I found this article called a portable and inexpensive seamless background system on the site called F stoppers and it goes down and it talks through, um, some tips for taking photography of, I think their, their main subject here is food, but this will work for products too. And so this, this image here is kind of a good example of something you may have seen, um, and I know I've seen, but I hadn't really th sat down and thought about. But they are using a piece of poster board here that's just curved so that you don't have a seam between the floor and the wall of the picture. So there's an example here. And they call that a sweep when it's just this like curved thing that you put behind your image. And I never really thought it was that big of a deal not having this. Um, I thought, okay, you can have a backer and you can have the bottom part because like I take a lot of pictures of my products on my windowsill so they're on the sill and then there's something behind them and even today I was trying to curve a piece of paper behind my uh, my glassware that I was taking a picture of but I was running into a spot where it's like the bottom of the paper met the windowsill itself it was causing this seam and I was like Ugh, I'm gonna have to edit that out but I thought that's kind of a nuisance but I, I'll deal with it but this article points out that when you're taking a lot of pictures, you do not want to have to edit that thing out over and over and over again. So having a sweep, and I never knew it was called this, is really great for avoiding that. And then they show some more examples of like this on the spot studio that they can make in someone's kitchen when they're doing food photography for them. But as we scroll down, I'll show you something even cooler. So this example here is what really caught my eye because they are using a placemat to add some texture and color underneath this cupcake. And look how cool it looks. It's not just white. Um, it actually kind of looks like a wood surface even. And it looks super natural. It's really interesting. You can see some of the texture here and focus where the cupcake is. And then as it goes to the back, it's um, fuzzier and more out of focus because your focal point is like right here and you would never guess that that was done with <laughs> a placemat and I was thinking that's so easy you might have a placemat in your cabinet right now maybe it needs a little ironing I know mine do um, but that you could totally do this with just grab a little bit of duct tape and tape it up and then shine some lights on it or put it by a window and you're in business um, and if you don't, you can definitely buy one. And I even went over to Target, Target site, and found this one. It's a brown linen placemat for $2.99. And you could just get one. <laughs> and you would have something that you could put in pictures. They even have this woven striped one up here. And a jute placemat here. And then napkins and other things as well. Uh, but I thought... This was a little bit of a gem in this article that I wanted to share with you because there's a lot of cool backdrops and things you can buy for your photos like on Amazon and you can get um, flooring and put it down and put it up near a wall on a table but this one is super portable, super lightweight and creates a nice classy look for your photos.